Amen. As I said, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 14. But if you don't, don't worry, everything should be in the screens that will be needed to be seen. So, thank you, River, for reading for me, uh, 1427. Today, I just felt appropriate to focus on peace as we are in Remembrance Sunday, remembering the great sacrifice many have given so we could enjoy the peace we have today on the bone of and the back of all of those who suffered and gave their life so we and our children to come and those that are here um, enjoy the peace that we have today. Let me just pray. Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you, God, for your truth. And Lord, we thank you that we can be in place today to remember history, to remember what has happened and to appreciate. Lord, we are here to appreciate of what we have and what we can enjoy due to sacrifice that was given and done. Lord, I pray that as we come to your word that you will open our minds, open our hearts, and Lord, let us be receptive to what is truth, to what is that you want us to know and see. I ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, if I were to say to you, Shalom, everyone would know what that is? Shalom, that is a very loaded word indeed, has a great meaning and in English we know the word peace and through the Hebrew Bible is the word Shalom. But actually when we focus, when we study, there is a great deal difference to the meaning of the peace we know to what the Bible speaks to us of peace, Shalom from the original Hebrew root, if you like. So what do I mean about the difference? In the world today, what we have been taught for the years that we have and we have experienced, peace really have a negative connotation. What do I mean by that? We only know peace as an absence of trouble. We know peace as an absence of war. England is not at war, praise God, and therefore we are at peace. Ukraine, unfortunately, is at war and they are not at peace. That is the meaning of peace in the world that we know today, which it does have that negative connotation. But when we come to the peace that God gives, to the peace that Christ established on the cross for us, it has a positive connotation. It has a positive meaning. When we say peace unto you or shalom, brothers and sisters, we are not saying in a word, oh, I hope you won't get in trouble. Most likely we are going to get in trouble. That's life. We do get that from time to time. But really, it has this overloaded meeting, meaning with a great positivity. What it really means, the heart of it, is, is simply saying that I hope that you have all the highest good coming your way. Is that positive that Scripture focuses on brothers and sisters. When we look at the peace that the Bible gives us, this is the beautiful thing, it is not related to our circumstances. It's not. It is the goodness of life that is not touched by what happens on the outside. You may be in the midst of great trials 
and still have that peace of God inside of you. That doesn't make sense, doesn't it? That's what the Bible teaches us. That's the richness of God's truth. You and I may be going through some great trials, difficulties, yet the Bible tells us that we can have a peace that is in the depths of our heart. And what does the Word of God, what does Paul say to us? He says that he could be content in any circumstance. He could be content in the good times. He could be content in some of those most difficult times that he, he has experienced. And actually, in most of the stories that we see with Paul, he actually demonstrates what he believes. And we see this where he demonstrated in Acts chapter 16. In Acts chapter 16, brothers and sisters, we have a story where Paul and Silas got caught up preaching God's word and they were beaten to the bone. They were beaten so heavily that they had to drag them in the inner cell. In the inner cell. Um, and scripture says that at midnight, Paul started singing. Beaten, worn out, tired, but in the cell, in the jail of Philippi, at midnight, he starts singing, praising God. Why? He was content in all circumstances. He was content with that goodness that God had given into, this, into his heart. And the, and the story is beautiful because it continues that God just blows away the cell doors. And when the jailer comes, he thinks everyone's escaped, run away, and is about to take his life. But Paul says, hang on a minute. You don't need to do that. We're all here. And it gives an opportunity where Paul has the opportunity to give God's goodness into this man's life and then to the rest of his family. Paul was content even at the time where he was badly beaten. James chapter 1 verse 2 Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials. And where does this peace come um, that is not just the absence of a war? Where does this peace come that is not affected by trouble or danger or sorrow? Really, it's a little bit ironic because on the day before Jesus was betrayed, he took the time to comfort his disciples. And that's the passage that Reuben said to us. Right before he was dying in agony, he took the time to bless his disciples and comfort them. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, but not as the world gives you. Not the peace that is absent of war. So therefore, let your heart not be troubled, nor let it be fearful. A peace that enables you and I, brothers and sisters, to remain calm in the most wildly fearful circumstances is that kind of peace. It enables them to hush a cry, still the riots, rejoice in pains and in trials, and to sing in the middle of suffering just like Paul did in, the, in prison. This peace is never affected by circumstances. In fact, 
It, it doesn't even affect or even it overthrows them. When we look at this peace, Scripture tells us that it has two parts. The nature of this peace have two parts, brothers and sisters. One, it is the objective peace. And that has to do with our relationship to God. And two, is the subjective peace, which has to do with your experience in life. With other words, God cares about your feelings. God cares how you feel. And He wants to be there to heal your experience as well. Amen? So the first part, it really is objective. It is what happens with our relationship to God. And we know, scripturally speaking, that our natural behavior, our natural human being lacks that peace with God. We all come into this world fighting against God because we are part of that rebellion which comes from Adam and Eve. You want it or not. Romans 5 verse 10 says that we were enemies of God. We fought against God. Everything that we did militated against His principle. But when we receive Christ, when we receive Jesus Christ, we cease, and this is beautiful, we cease being the enemies of God. We make truce with Him. We come in the sight of the Lord. And the hostility at that point when we meet Christ is ended, brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ, in a sense, wrote that treaty with the blood of His cross. That treaty, that bond, that covenant, that peace that declares that object objective fact that we now are at peace. Peace with him. Ephesians chapter 6 verse, verse 15 says that the good news of salvation, the preparation of the gospel of peace, in a sense, is that which makes man who was at war with God to be at peace with him. And that is the heart of the gospels. So the peace is objective, is that that has nothing to do with the way you feel or the way you think. It won't change the truth. The fact is that it all has been accomplished for you and I. Doesn't matter the way you think, doesn't matter the way you feel, the truth remains. Romans 5.1 Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Amen? We who trust in Christ are redeemed and are declared righteous by faith. Hallelujah. Our sins are forgiven. Rebellion ceases. The war is over. And we have peace with God. And that's the wonderful news of salvation, brothers and sisters. Whereas God and man once were estranged, they have now been reconciled, which is the heart, the truth of the gospel. But in John, and you may say, what did you take all this time for? In John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus is not really speaking about that part of peace. He is speaking about the subjective peace, the experiential, if you like, peace. That what you and I feel inside of us. That is what Jesus is speaking here. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in me. It's that feeling part. It is like tranquility of the soul, a settled, positive peace that affects circumstances of life. 
it is a peace in a sense that is aggressive rather than being victimized by events. It attacks them and gobbles them up. It is supernatural, permanent, positive, no side effects, divine tranquilizer. It is the firm conviction that he who spared not his own son will also, along with him, freely give us all things. That is what Romans 8.32 says. And this is the peace that Paul teaches us about. Romans chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. That is a deep verse, brothers and sisters. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts, your minds in Christ Jesus. Peace I keep repeating myself, but that is not based on circumstances like the world's peace. So it doesn't always make sense, brothers and sisters, in the carnal mind, in your mind, in my mind. Paul is saying to us that this peace surpasses all understanding. So it's not something natural that we can just comprehend. It doesn't seem reasonable that such peace could exist in the midst of the problems or troubles that Christians, as Christians, we go through. But this is divine, supernatural peace. It cannot be figured out on human level. That's why we need faith. But I love the words that Paul uses in that verse that I just said to you. It says, it's, it mentions the word guard. And that word guard, it does not mean to watch or keep imprisoned. It is a word that is often used in military that has this meaning, to stand at a post and guard against any aggression of the enemy. That is what the peace of God is doing for you and me, brothers and sisters to guard, to stand at the post and guard against any aggression of the enemy. So when peace is on guard, the Christian has entered on impregnable um, citadel from which nothing can dislodge him. The name of the fortress is Christ. And the guard is the peace of God. Hallelujah. The peace of God stands guard and keeps worry from corroding our hearts. And unworldly thoughts from tearing up our minds. And this is the kind of peace that we really want. Want a peace that deal with the past, one that it has no strings of conscience dipped in the prison of the past sins, which tear them and torture the man's mind. We want peace that governs the presence with no unsatisfied desires that gnaw in our hearts. We want peace that holds promise of the future and not worry about the fear of the unknown and the darkness of tomorrow which threatens them. And that is exactly the peace through which guilt of the past is forgiven 
by which the trial of the presence are overcome and which our destiny of the future is secured eternally. That is the peace that the Bible teaches us, brothers and sisters. That is the peace that God has provided for us. It is the peace in two parts. It is a peace that made possible for you and I, where once we were enemies of God, but through the blood of Christ, we became friends. We became family of God. We joined in the side of the Lord. But also, God cares for the way we feel. God cares for our emotional being. And Jesus also says that is a, a subject uh, piece where it has to do with the way we experience, the way we feel. It's a piece that Paul also expands that it guides your heart and it guides my heart. It protects our mind. The enemy will always will try to remind us of our past. The enemy will always try to put guilt in your heart and in my heart. But if we know the truth, if we accept the peace of God, that is what peace will do to us. It will guard our mind, it will guard our heart from that guilt that will try to corrode us and for those guilt feelings and the thoughts that are worthless, in a sense, that will try to take over our life. God has given us a peace that is not touched by circumstances. It is the quality of life. It is the goodness of life that we gain by believing in Jesus Christ. Amen? Let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your truth. We thank you, O oh God, that you have provided a peace that is beyond our comprehension. Lord, it is a peace that guards our hearts and minds through your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray for those of us who may be struggling. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will remind us. Lord, give us the strength to hold on to this peace. God, that we do not lose control but we remain in you, Lord. Oh God, we are so grateful. We are so thankful. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let us sing one more song, brothers and sisters. Blessed assurance. Stand with me as you can. <laughs> 